Hey friends, welcome back. How's everybody doing? Doing well? Yeah, I feel like there's uh, very little energy left for, in everybody towards the end of the semester, which is okay. I mean, we're almost done. So the good thing is that you have the whole summer to rest, if that's what you're planning to do, because I know that sometimes people are actually working in the summer and doing who knows what instead of resting. But I'm hoping that everybody will find some time to rest. Well, anyways, welcome back. Uh, today's main agenda item is assignment eight. So we're going to wrap up assignment eight. Okay. And also, I don't, I don't think it, it will take us too long. Um, but uh, once, we're, once we're done with assignment eight, we will also talk about uh, the administrative matters, like what's coming up about the final exam, also known as, as exam four. I will basically open the floor to any questions that you, that you may have uh, for that uh, final part uh, of the semester that we're about to complete. Okay, so uh, can you please open assignment eight document file? Because there you have information about the tabs that you need to have in your Excel workbook. So what I will do, I will go ahead and download that file so that we can see it. Again, uh, if you're joining us in Zoom, I'm assuming you can hear me well, because you're not saying anything. And I'm assuming you can see my screen. Yes, on both of those. All right, thank you. Thank you for confirming. Okay, so last time we talked about creating a database file that contains uh, five tables and six queries uh, provided here. Um, I gave you the tables, right? Last time I gave you the tables to start with, and I believe we did all those uh, six queries together, okay? Uh, then we started talking about exporting those queries into Excel, and I will do it once again, and then we'll do some actual uh, data crunching in Excel. So, so these are the tabs that you need to have in Excel. So you need to have uh, a summary page. So this is where all stats, all numbers will be provided or summarized. This is something that we will do last. Uh, then we need to have information about, in, uh, about players' performance in the league, starting the year and all starting year. So we're talking about importing, uh, yeah, importing in the league, uh, starting the year and uh, all star in the year. So we're talking about importing data from those three tables. We also need to import uh, coaches values, okay? Because we'll be uh, juxtaposing or comparing coaches values to the values that we will come up with. And then uh, everything will go into that summary tab right here. Okay? And then based, uh, based on that summary tab, we'll go ahead and create charts. So we'll go, uh, we'll go through all of those tabs together. Uh, the first thing we'll do, we'll just import the four tables that, that I mentioned. We're going to go ahead and import them in Excel once again. So what I will do, I will open Excel uh, application. And I believe we did it last time. I'll just do it once again. Okay, then I'll go to data and then uh, I'll go to this get data section from database. We're going to import it from Microsoft Access database. So the database file that we worked on last time is right here. So I'll go ahead and select this file for import. So to establish a connection to this database, it will take uh, some time for it to load this database. Okay, uh, I will select multiple values. We need to have data in the league. Uh, total in the league, no, sorry, we need tables. In the, in the league, uh, all star in year, starter in year, and we also need to have uh, coaches values. Okay. Press the wrong button. So I'll do it again. Okay. 
So once again, I'll select multiple items. So I'll pick all those tables that we need. Okay. See those options. I cannot see it because of, uh, oh, sorry, I stopped it. Let me just try to do it. I cannot show those options on the screen. Remember last time I forgot to select those options about uh, in importing into the table, right? So I had to uh, stop sharing to select this table option. So let me see what I can show you. So we need to import it into a table or pivot table. I think it will work in a pivot table. So we'll select new worksheet. Let's see what it works. Looks like we didn't select all tables, right? So let me try doing it again. I wanna make sure I select all the tables. Just one second, I'll close this one. Okay, so I don't know why it wasn't loaded, but we need to select load to option, right? And then we're gonna import this data into a table. Okay, and it will be new worksheet, so it should work. I think last time we forgot to select all the tables. Okay, so now we have all four sheets, right? Okay, so finally it worked. Okay, so let's change the names of those sheets. Uh, so we need to have in the league, uh, starter in the year and all star in the year. Okay, so we wanna make sure those are correct numbers. I guess we need to be looking at those top values to see whether it's the correct data set. So when you look at the summary, we can see that for in the league, the first value for draft number one is 30, right? So let's see how those are total points. Just wanna make sure we have the correct data. Okay, so this one where we have one, one, and then zero. So this sheet four. Okay, so this is coach's value. So we're just gonna put it like this. Okay. 
Now, this one is probably in the leak. So it has all ones except value number six. Okay, yeah, so this is in the leak. Okay, now th this one. Same values or not, there's something strange going on here. Okay, so this is probably star in the year. Okay, let me also look at my records. I wanna make sure we have the correct tab. So, okay, so this is star in the year, right? So it's one, one. Yeah, so what about in the league? Yes, in the leak has similar data. Okay, so let's see. Okay, star in the year has has zero for value number seven, right? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what. You, so this is uh, star in the year. Okay, so this is star in the year, right? Okay, and this one mu must be the all star team, right? All star in the year, that's the name. And let's say this will be our summary sheet. Okay. So did you all get to this point? There's nothing there. I just created like a blank sheet. We're going to copy values. Okay. Let me do something. So, okay. No, this is all the data that we have for now. Okay, so we're gonna do a couple of things. The first thing that we will do, we'll create, uh, we'll convert a coach's values into some kind of relative unit that we can use to compare it to our model. Uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna convert each value in a percentage where the total possible uh, value of points will be 100%. So the first thing we'll do, we'll, we'll compute the total sum of points in that Coach Smith scoring model. So we're gonna use some function then I'm just gonna select this range that starts at uh, B2. So it's gonna be B2 through B101. So this is the sum, okay? And then we're gonna divide each value by this sum. So let me check which cell it is. So this is B102. So we're gonna put the following equation here. So it will be this value, which is, let's just spell it out. B2 divided by B102. Now we need to make this cell a constant because we'll be dragging this uh, uh, formula across all rows. So it needs to be a constant, okay? Actually, it's only needed before the number because we'll be in the same column, but just to be sure, we'll make it a constant across rows and columns. Okay, so, so we did that and somehow it copied to all of the rows. 
And then what we will do, we'll form format all those values as percentages. So I'll select all of these values. I'll go to format cells and I'll select with the percentage option, the two decimal points. So here it is. So now we convert it from uh, abstract units, which is points to something that can be compared to uh, other ranking system where uh, each pick is also measured in terms of percent from the total value, right? So now we have percentages here. Okay. Yeah, that's the formula right here. Okay, did you all get to this point? Uh, what is in B one hundred two? I'm sorry. Say it again. What is in B one hundred two? Uh, this is the total cell right here. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Cell right here. Because we're dividing each score by the total value of all scores to find the percentage. Okay. It's B hundred and two, but there's a dollar sign before B and before hundred and two to make it constant. Okay. Uh, doesn't matter. We'll we'll copy it to a new sheet anyway. You can name it if you want to. You know, it, because it's a pivot table, it copied that cell for all values. But if it doesn't copy, you can just drag it like this. Yeah, I'll check what they are. What do you have in B hundred and two? Oh, um, you don't have anything here. We calculated the total. Sound. You don't have a sound. That's why it's, there's nothing in that cell. Okay. So what we're gonna do next, uh, we're gonna create uh, point, uh, we're gonna calculate points for each of the player in those three performance dimensions, okay? Uh, remember last time we said that uh, being in the league is probably the least uh, valuable, the least important indicator of performance, right? Because a lot of players, they stay in the league, right? So, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna treat those league points, we're gonna assign uh, to those league points an arbitrary value of 10. So for every year of being in the league, uh, each player gets 10 points, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna sum points here. Let's, let's enter actual range because I don't like those uh, relative links. So it's gonna be uh, B2 through B2, right? That's the range. And we're gonna multiply it by 10. So that will be the score. Okay. Then for being star in the year, we're gonna assign 20 points. Okay, so we're gonna enter something similar. So we're gonna have the same range. So it's gonna be some uh, B2 through B2, but we're gonna assign 20 points for each year of being in the league. And then for being an all-star player in one particular year, we're gonna assign a value of 30 points, okay? So we're gonna enter sum, it's gonna be again B2 through B2. And then we're gonna divide, uh, multiply it by 30 points. Okay, so did you all get there? Did you all calculate those points? So let me check something before we proceed.
I want to make sure we have the same points as in the textbook. I just want to double check that. Yeah, so it's like that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna create a summary value. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna copy this draft number field so that we know which player we're talking about. So I'll go here and uh, I'll just paste the values because I wanna make it simple, okay? Well, for now we just need draft numbers. You, you, you don't need even to copy, you can just put your own numbers. Yeah, it's, this, it's also you can you can put like draft number yourself, okay? So you'll highlight it as a table, and then you can put menu like one, two, three, four, and then you can highlight those first four entries, and then you can just drag it down until hundred because we have a total of hundred ticks, okay? So I just copied it to make it faster. Okay, now we'll left align it. So this is draft number. Now let's see how we did it in this sheet. What are the names? Okay, so first of all, we're gonna put uh, points for being in the league. Okay, so this will be in the league. And I'll try to use the same kind of, so this is draft num, I'll put number. Just make sure uh, the values are sorted uh, from one to 100 and all of those other sheets, because I noticed like when I imported for some reason, one was not sorted properly. So I sorted it myself. So, so this will be in the league. So when you look at your file, when you look in the league, make sure draft number is from one to 100, right? Because I remember in one sheet for some reason it wasn't. So what I'll do, I'll just copy all those values. I'll do it by values. I'll select this uh, special option. Maybe I'll send to the one. In which sheet? Uh, you need to paste by values. Like when you copy those sheets, right click and then select paste special. There'll be like a paste special option and select values only. So something like this, uh, right click. If you put ref, it means you're copying formula. Okay. And then the next column in the summary will be star in the year and then all star in the year. I'll copy this column and I'll paste values only. So again, I select uh, paste special, paste options, and I select values. And the, uh, the third column will be in the league, right? Oh, sorry, it will be uh, all star in the year, that last column. I'm sorry, it's all star. back I need to copy it. 
Okay, and then we're gonna create total points. Right. Uh, just make sure you do this. Select, don't select like anything from the pivot table itself. Like when you go to the sheet, just select values only. Just click here. Don't click on this uh, filter. Maybe that's the problem. Let me check. On this. Okay, and then I'll create another column called total points. I'll just sum it all up across three performance indicators. Okay, and for that, I'm just using sum function. So the sum will be from B2 to D2. So I hit enter and then I just copy this formula across all rows. So now we have points based on our scoring system. Uh, but remember, remember we want this scoring system that we have to be comparable with Coach Smith's scoring system, right? That's why we converted Coach Smith scores into percentages so we can compare them, right? Because in a way, those percentages are arbitrary, right? They're not in, in any specific units of comparable units of measurement, right? So what we need to do, we need to convert those values into percentages as well, right? So what we will do, we'll calculate total sum. So remember, it starts here at E2. So we're gonna have E2 through E1, that will be the range. E2 through E101, sorry, not one. So this is the total value of all our points. So basically, I add all those values in the column. Okay, did you all get to this point? Do I need to slow down and wait for people to catch up or not? Are you all, are you all following along? What about you and you guys in Zoom? Yeah. Uh, I'm following along, but I have some different values for some of the numbers, but somehow I have the same sum at the end. So I don't know how that's working, but. I think, uh, you know what happened to me? Uh, I don't know why it happened, but when I imported my uh, tables from Access to Excel, for some reason, like the, I, I forgot to bring it to your attention, but I, I noticed that one of the sheets did not have a uh, player sorted in, uh, sending order. So it was like kind of scrambled all those draft numbers. So I quickly sorted it, right? So maybe that's that's the problem. You didn't copy it in the, for the right kind of drafts. This is what I'm talking about here. Like I, I forgot for some reason, I forgot to bring it to your attention, but it was not like one through 100. Draft picks were not one through 100. So I went here and I selected smallest to largest here. So that, that could be the problem. Like one of your sheets is not sorted from one to 100. All right, I'll look into it, thanks. Yeah, so maybe you'll try to catch up. So we need to convert it to relative values. So the value of that cell, that, uh, that total cell is E102, right? So we're gonna have relative values. So for each value, we're gonna divide total points by E102. And we're gonna make it a constant so that the cell stays the same as we drag this formula across rows. So it's E2 divided by E102. And then what I will do, I'll just go ahead and drag this formula down to calculate relative percentages for all players. And then just like we did last time, we're gonna select this whole column and we're gonna convert it 
to percentages. So the display value will be percentages. Okay, what happened? Let me save my file in case something crashes. I don't want to restart the whole thing. Yeah. So those are relative values. Now, what we will do next, as you can see here in this sheet, we're going to create a, uh, uh, we a can moving see the sheet on Zoom. That again, please. Uh, we can't see the sheet on Zoom. Okay, thank you. Forgot to share my screen here. Okay, now you can see it, right? So, did you see what I did? So I entered this yeah, we formula. Can see it now. Yeah, E2 divided by E102. And I made E102 a constant cell. So I put dollar sign before E and 102. And then they just dragged it down here like this. And then to show those numbers as percentages, I right click on the entire row and I go to format cells and I select percentage with two decimal points. Okay. So now we have relative values and I'll go ahead and left align it for the sake of consistency. Did you all get there? Got it? Okay. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to do smoothing. Okay. Um, it, it's kind of, it's hard to explain what it is like with one sentence. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll spend like a few minutes uh, explaining it. Uh, you see, uh, like what, what, sci what scientists do, they create a simple models of complex reality, right? For example, I don't know. Like when, when, like for example, when scientists, uh, I don't know, model how a rocket will fly through uh, through air, right? They use simplification of reality. They will build some kind of a perfect parabola, right? Now, in reality, a rocket will not fly through space in that perfect parabola, right? For example, there may be some fluctuations in uh, atmospheric pressure. There may be like some differences in the temperature. Therefore, it's not going to be a perfect parabola, right? But humans. I guess they like to simplify things, right? They, they like to think in terms of simple models, simple trends, okay? So instead of drawing something, oh, let me show you here. So for example, when we are talking about a rocket, we'll say, okay, based on our calculations, it will fly through this kind of parabola, right? Well, it may not actually fly through, the, through this uh, type of perfect parabola, right? This is oversimplification of reality. It would be more like this. some fluctuation, something like this, right? Okay. But nevertheless, we like to think in terms of uh, simple things, like simple models, like simple explanations. I guess the most extreme of it, and uh, I'm still kind of trying to philosophically understand like whether it's valid or not. If you take any management course, most likely you'll be exposed to some of the theories or ideas from Harvard Business School, right? For example, uh, you know, generic business level strategies and things like that. What what Harvard Business School people like to do, they like to put very complex ideas such as strategies that companies pursue into some kind of simple two by two matrix, right? Now you understand, uh, you understand that life is more complex than, than four choices than, than a two by two matrix, right? There are so many nuances and in between values, but again, to make your knowledge, to make your model useful, it needs to be simple, right? It needs to be simple. Um, so I guess Harvard people are criticized for oversimplifying reality, but at the same time, it's their strength as well. What they do, they take something very complex and they put it in a simple two by two matrix, right? And they'll just say, this is like, this axis is level of focus. Uh, this axis is level of customization, right? And then you can pursue one of those four strategies, something like that, right? And at the same time, that's why they're so successful because they help people to take something complex and break it down uh, into a very simple form, right? So, so you're gonna do here something simple your relative value is basically the saying as you go from draft, uh, if you go from draft number one to 100, it increases obviously, right? That's what the total trend shows, okay? Right? 
So, so this is the essence of your model. As you go from draft number one to 100, the value of those peaks, uh, sorry, I said increases, decreases. Right, decreases. So that's your general trend. So you're trying to draw a perfect parabola, but you're basing it on real data. And real data is for real, uh, real players. And those real players, because they're real players participating in real tournaments, they're not as perfect as your theory, right? So for example, somebody who was selected during early picks can actually have less scores than somebody who was selected in later picks. Case in point, look, draft number three has 90 points while draft number 11 has 180 points. You see what I'm saying? So it kind of contradicts your theory. But that's, uh, uh, you know, that's something that, uh, Expect it, right? Life is, is more complex, it's fuzzier than what your theory says. However, nevertheless, for the purposes of building your own model, scoring model, you want to smooth things out. You want to remove those fluctuations a little bit. Okay? So in other words, you don't want those extreme fluctuations to be in the model. If you do, then your, your line, your parabola will be too fuzzy to understand, to, to visualize, right? It will have all kinds of fluctuations, okay? So for that, we're going to create moving average score. In other words, we're going to let those outliers, we're gonna pull those outliers, those fluctuating values a bit closer to the parabola that we're trying to build, a bit closer to the curve, okay? So, so the first thing, I'm gonna close this annotation. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna create a moving average column, okay? And look, this is what I will do. For the first value, it will be the same as this cell. It's a, so here the formula equals to F2. Now let me check how they did it in the textbook to make sure I don't miss something. Yeah, so, so the first value will be the same as this value. The second value will be the same as the second value here. That will be F3, okay? Now, for the third value and so on, it will be the average of the three values, including this one, okay? So it will be average. So this is the formula. Of F2 through F4. So this is the smoothing effect, right? We're pulling each value a bit closer to the curve by computing the average based on previous values as well. So this is what moving average is all about. So you see this value is in it. So for example, if this value was very high or very low, right? That effect, that deviation would be uh, reduced by including the previous two values in the calculation. So this is the, this is the so-called smoothing effect. We're trying to smooth this line out a little bit, okay? So the first value is the same. The second value is the same. The third one is a moving average. It's, it's an average of those three values. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this formula and drag it all the way down to, to calculate those average, uh, moving averages for each value. Yeah, the first one equals F2, which means the same value as this one. This value is F3, which again means the same value as this one. And this value is average of those three, F2 through F4. Yeah, F2 through F4, four. what? Well, it has to do with, with your data. I mean, um, that's why I created those screenshots, right? So what you can do, double check, not even the summary, but those individual uh, sheets first, right? To make sure you have the same values. So most likely you didn't copy the correct values. Maybe they were not sorted from one to 100. So that's why your, your values are a bit different. So you may have to recalculate it based on, uh, if you find you know, where, where that error came from. Okay, so I created this moving average. And then I'm gonna include a uh, coach. Well, actually, let, let's leave it like that. So this is our summary of our model, of our scoring model. So we, we pulled all those points, we calculated relative values, and then we created a moving average column. So we smoothed that curve out a little bit. So 
let me double check my own values to make sure they are correct. Maybe I made a mistake somewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, the first values are correct. I'm not sure about the last values. Okay, so maybe I made a mistake somewhere. Okay, let's double check. That. So thanks for bringing that up. So for draft number 12, I have 221. Uh, I think your starter in year data is not sorted correctly. Okay, yeah, let me double check. Oh yeah, that's a mistake. I actually didn't correct it. Yeah, thank you for bringing that. So you see it's sorted here, but then over here, we have kind of random order, right? So let me correct it. Thanks for bringing that up. So I'll, I'll sort smallest to largest first. So now it seems to be in order, right? So I'll copy those values again. And then I'll go to the summary here. So it was starting here, right? Correct. So I'll paste it here. Okay, now let me check. Now it's correct, right? So now you should have similar values. Sorry, I was telling you it's it's you who didn't copy it correctly, but it looks like it's me who didn't copy those values correctly. All right, but it's good that you noticed, otherwise it would have a confusing model. So now you have same values? Okay, good. Okay, so we'll leave it at that for now. And then what we'll do, uh, that's the last part of this assignment. We'll create charts where we can visualize those models and compare them side by side. So what I will do, I will create a new tab called charts. Again, we have, we're gonna have draft numbers the first column, I'll just put one, two, three, and then I'll copy this progression until 100. So we have 100 picks. So the first thing we're gonna copy is Coach Smith values, values, scoring values for those picks. So we're just going to copy it from this sheet. Okay, so we copy those values and we convert them to percentages. Go to format cells and we select as percentage. And then here we're going to create uh, we're going to create a column called our values, but it's really those moving averages, right? That's the the smooth curve that we created. So we're going to go back to summary and copy this entire column. Now, don't forget to paste these values, otherwise you may get an error. So, paste it as values and again, format it as a percentage. So, 
So those are values side by side. So what you will do next, you'll create a chart. And then based on this chart, you will create an, you will write like a brief interpretation right below this chart. Like what do you see uh, in those models, how they compare to each other, which one? Ultimately you need to answer the following question. Which model you think is better in your opinion? So this is the item in the word file. So make sure your charts tab also contains a brief memo comparing the old chart by Coach Smith to your own chart and giving a recommendation to the team's management based on that comparison. Okay. Okay, so uh, I'm not gonna spend too much time beautifying those charts, but I'll show you quickly how to build it. So what you need to do, you need to select those two columns, okay? And then go to insert and then recommended charts. Usually uh, Excel is smart enough to recognize the type of chart you wanna build. So you're gonna build like a line, top, line uh, chart. So it's not gonna be scatter plot, it's gonna be that second category. Okay, so when you press okay, this chart is right here. So the first thing I'll do, I'll change the title. Uh, draft scoring system. Coach Smith versus our model, something like that. The second one. So I selected these two columns and I went to insert, recommend the charts, and then I selected this line type. You can also find it here, like in one of those options. Now, let me do something here, just one second. I get lost in those options all the time. Um, the first thing I'll do, you see, we smooth, you see Coach Smith model is kind of smooth. It's a smooth line, right? Ours, it's not a smooth line. So what we'll do, we'll create a, a smoothing line. So select this line like this, so just click on it, okay? Then select chart elements options and select trend line right here. So we're doing further smoothing, okay? So now you see this dotted line is a linear trend line, right? So now we can, uh, you know, the comparison becomes a bit more close, right? Because here we have too many fluctuations. That's what we're trying to avoid with this moving average, but it still has a lot of fluctuations. So once again, I clicked on this line and I went to uh, chart elements and I added trend line option, okay? Now uh, you can also beautify it by adding like axis title. So here we're gonna have a draft number, draft, I'll let you experiment with those beautification options to make sure that your chart looks professional and uh, easy to understand. I guess one thing I will do, maybe I'll do something with this tick line. Because uh, it doesn't look that nice. Interval between tick marks, maybe 10. Minor none.
Hey, you know, there's one trick I couldn't find like a quick work workaround. So I, I put like spe interval units of 10, right? But it starts with one, which is a bit awkward, okay? Um, I couldn't like, maybe I'm missing something, but I couldn't find an option to kind of force that zero here on the line, right? So what I did, I created another row here. And I added draft number zero just to make sure this axis contains zero, right? And in that case, the numbering starts from zero and goes to zero, 10, and so forth, right? For some reason, I couldn't find like a better workaround for this. So let me do it one again, once again with this draft number zero. So I'll, I'll have to forego all of my previously entered options. It's up to you. I mean, I'll, I'll just let you experiment to make sure it looks nice and similar to what I have in my solutions file. Go to insert. Okay, so I haven't done it yet. Well, anyways, I couldn't find like an easy way to force it to start with one. So it looks a bit awkward, okay? So I'll let you do all those formatting on your own. So just go to labels and number and experiment with those to force. So that's what I did. For some reason, I cannot recreate it now, but I made this, uh, I included draft pick number zero as well so that this axis starts with zero and not with one, okay? Maybe that you can also do it from those options here, but I couldn't find like an easy way to do it. Yeah, the, I think the interface has changed with this uh, uh, Excel version. So I couldn't find it easy way. So I included like draft number one and that worked out for me. But it, it's all, I mean, it's a correct, uh, it's a correct chart. It's just that it looks a bit awkward that it starts with one. Okay. So, so this is the chart. And again, I'll let you experiment with those access options so that you see all those options that are available for formatting. Um, what, re what remains here is an interpretation uh, just like this file says. Comparing the old chart by Coach Smith to your own chart and giving recommendation. So if you compare Coach Smith chart, which is that blue line, to your own chart, which is that orange line, right? So what's the difference? How would you explain the difference? So what's the difference between his scoring system and your scoring system? Looking at the charts, I mean... Uh... Through his okay. scoring system. Well, I mean, to me, I mean, I, I don't know which one is more accurate. I mean, we're not talking about we're not talking about like good or bad. We're just talking like how how are they different, right? Sorry, somebody was there in Zoom. What did you say? Yeah, I, I was saying that um, on the Coach Smith values, you know, it, he values the early round picks or the early picks a lot higher than on our okay. values, and then that tends to change as we get to round. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, late, so look, like early happened, to mid twenties, it starts to go. Yeah, over. somewhere like a, you know up to pick. Uh, well, actually, after pick number twenty, somewhere here, the two models are almost the same, right? They look almost identical. The difference lies here in early picks. It looks like Coach Smith puts an exponentially higher value for those early picks, right? So that's the main difference between those two models, right? So what is your recommendation? Which one? Which system do you recommend? I'm sorry? Well, I mean, everybody wants the first pick, but I'm just saying for scoring those picks, which system do you recommend? Why? Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I take your point. So uh, uh, Harrison here is making a good point. He's basically saying that, look, our system, which is that orange line, it's based on scoring, right? So in other words, we're, we're objective in a sense that we're keeping track of player scores to see how good that player is, right? So I guess uh, what we can say, uh, we can say that our data shows, right? That based on performance, early picks, they're more valuable, but not as valuable as Coach Smith thought, right? So I take that argument, right? Uh, to, if you ask my opinion, and again, I'm not a sports expert, like I'm not expert on sports or sports management, I would go with Coach Smith's system, right? Uh, because I know this is how uh, big sports business works, right? You need to have a superstar on your team, okay? Uh, again, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe you're an expert in basketball or something like that, but if you take like somebody, uh, who's like a basketball superstar, Michael Jordan, right? Uh, you see the thing about him, and again, feel free to prove me wrong because I haven't looked at this data, I'm not an expert. If you compare like, you know, Michael Jordan against, I don't know, top, I don't know, 10, uh, 10 20 NBA players of his uh, time, right? Maybe he will be slightly better than them, right? But in the mind of the public, he's like, you know, he's up there, right? I mean, if you ask people like, I guess, qualitatively to compare Michael Jordan to the next best player, they would say, oh, you know, he's a superstar, he's the best. Uh, but, but I think if you look at objective scoring, right, you will see that maybe he's 10% better than, than, maybe even not even 10%, right? Maybe a few percent better than the next guy, right? So he is not 10 times or five or three times better, right? In other words, Michael Jordan will not replace five players on a team in terms of performance wise. You see what I'm saying? However, this kind of mental scoring where Michael Jordan is way up there versus everybody else, I think it's important from a business standpoint because indeed those top stars like Michael Jordan and Shaquille O'Neal, they bring a lot of interest. They bring a lot of money to the team, right? So I guess Coach Smith, he kind of knew, uh, knew what it's all about, right? He knew that let's put a, that, I think that was his thinking. Let's put a lot of emphasis on early picks because those early picks, they will allow you to uh, recruit Michael Jordan or Shaquille O'Neal. Once we get a superstar like that, right? It doesn't matter whether they're two times or three times better. We'll get like all those fans following our team and things like that, right? I understand. Uh, well, I guess what I'm trying to say, I guess it comes down to the, have you heard the saying like winner takes it all, right? So for example, if you're talking about swimming competition, like I did swimming in high school, right? Sometimes the difference between first and second place is like a fraction of a second, right? However, the winner versus the second place, the difference like in, in perceptions is huge, right? If you look at the numbers, it, the difference is almost non-existent, right? And you know, sometimes people just don't press like on time, like their stopwatch or something is malfunctioning. It's not even, it's, it's sometimes you don't, you're not even sure whether this, this person is really the first one, right? And you know, in high school competition, they don't do like those replays where they actually look at the video and things like that. So sometimes you're not even sure whether this guy came first because the difference is like half a second or a quarter of a second, but winner takes it all, right? So I think that's what Coach Smith was trying, was, that's what he's thinking. He was trying to collect, uh, to collect those big time winners for his team, right? Objectively, they're not that much better than the next pick, right? But in the minds of the public, they are very important. They are those superstars that bring a lot of loyalty, a lot of reputation, a lot of revenue to the team, right? So. I tend to like Coach Smith better, Smith system better, because it kind of takes into account that subjective valuation, right? Winner takes it all. Yeah. So I guess uh, our model shows how players really do performance wise, right? While Coach Smith takes into account that subjective portion of, of sports where top performers get disproportionately, uh, disproportional attention and, and bring disproportional revenue to the company, uh, to the team, something like that, right? So that's why it's very important to place a lot of values on early picks because that will allow you to grab one of those superstars once in a while, something like that.
Well, anyways, that's my maybe I'm, I'm uh, maybe I'm wrong because uh, I'm not an expert in it, but that's what I'm thinking. Like I'm that's I'm speculating. This is where Coach Smith was coming from, right? That those early picks they're disproportionately more valuable. It's like in boxing. That's a sport I know something about. Like uh, a lot of people, including myself, they think highly, let's say, of Mike Tyson because you know he was. Um, I mean. The thing about Mike Tyson, because at the end of the day, it's inter entertainment. He was very entertaining, right? He was controversial. He was you know, fast. He had this showmanship, right? Uh, but realistically, and, and you, know, like sometimes, you know, sometimes I hear people talking about Mike Tyson and they say, oh, Mike Tyson, you know, he could have destroyed anybody in his prime and things like that. He was a good athlete, right? He was a very entertaining athlete. However, I don't think his, if you compare them to other strong heavyweights like Holyfield, right? I don't think he was like twice as better than Holyfield, right? Maybe three percent better, maybe. But we know that. And 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 by the way, uh, Holyfield, as you probably remember, he beat Mike Mike Tyson what two times? Towards the end, towards the end of the career, there were like this. Uh, yeah, I think they had those three matches. Well, yeah, that was actually lost, like disqualification, because he beat his ear. But anyways, Holyfield looked much better, right? But again, nobody thinks high. Well, I wouldn't say nobody, but people still think more highly of Mike Tyson because of that showmanship, right? So that kind of proves my point that. Uh, those superstars, those bright stars, they, they, they get the disproportional value in terms of love and, and loyalty and excitement and things like that, right? Yeah, they're all very good, right? It's just that somebody who is who somehow, and, and you know, sometimes what happens in sports is that once somebody gets ahead a little bit, not by much, by 5%, the whole team, you know, I think it's a well-researched phenomenon, the whole team starts playing around that player, giving him even more edge, right? in the game. So, so that's the point. Uh, just like our model shows, those top picks, maybe they're like slightly better, right? But they're not, as, as the Coach Smith model shows, they're not like five or 10 times better, right? However, Well, they might, but in the minds of the people, there's always like a, there's the first guy and then everybody else. It doesn't matter if you're second, third, or fifth, or 21st. It's like second, first, the top guy, like uh, Michael Jordan, and everybody else is there, right? So, and in their minds, it's like what Coach Smith is saying. Uh, Michael Jordan is way up there, everybody else is here, which is not true, right? They're much closer than that, but that's how uh, the mental perceptions are built. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, friends, so we're done with this assignment. Don't forget about the interpretation and don't forget to submit both files. Now let's go and talk before we go, uh, um, before we wrap up this course, let's look at some administrative issues. Okay, so assignment eight is due May 2nd. So you have some time to work on it, okay? Uh, okay, so yeah, I don't wanna extend it because I wanna use the time on Monday to enter all the grades to make sure I have everything in, okay? So assignment eight will be due by Sunday. Uh, the second thing we need to look at is exam four. By the way, uh, exam four is also, uh, is also our final exam. So that's the last exam for the semester. Now let's check Murray State final exam calendar to, to make sure that we're all on the same page in relation to the deadline for this exam. Maybe it's not here. If you go, if you go back, it's on there. It's under the. Uh, it's on this page. Yeah. It's uh, on the drop down for spring twenty twenty. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So here we have. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So this class meets on Tuesdays and Thursdays at two p.m. Right. So our exam is is on officially is on Wednesday, right? May fifth. So what I will do, I will set the deadline for this exam for Wednesday, okay? 
Uh, of course, you don't have to wait until Wednesday to take this exam. You can take it early if you want to, but that's the last day to take this exam on Wednesday, May 5th. So let me do it right now. So that's the last day to take this exam. Uh, the other thing I would like to bring your attention to is that we still have a class on Tuesday, right? Uh, to make things interesting, uh, I, I created an extra credit assignment based on uh, Tuesday's lecture. The lecture on Tuesday and also what we discussed uh, uh, on Tuesday of this week. So this is the extra credit assignment. So uh, after listening to uh, our lecture and also after reading these two papers, the first paper is actually my paper on big data from Business Horizons. And the second paper criticizes big data. It basically says that uh, big data sometimes is just as bad as having no data at all, right? So after listening to the lecture and after reading those two papers, you should answer the following question. Okay, so, uh, so I'll, I'll set the deadline on Tuesday, okay? So that will be right before the final exam, which is, which is well, let me, uh, let me do it on, on uh, Wednesday as well. So for example, you can do both at the same time. Well, let me think for a second. Let me do it on Tuesday. So we'll finish lecture and that's that's your, because if I put it on Wednesday, then people may take the final exam first and then see whether they need it or not. So I don't want it to be like uh, that kind of easy uh, decision-making, right? I want people to, to do it. Uh, I, I, I want to have like uh, more people do this assignment. Okay, so it will be due on May 4th. So, but again, after completing this lecture, after completing our lecture on Tuesday, you're in a good position to complete this extra credit assignment. So you need to listen to our big data lecture and you need to listen to it anyway, because exam four is based on, on our big data lecture. And to get uh, a bit deeper into the subject of big data, I'm asking you to read those two additional papers and then take a stance on the following issue. Does big data lead to better business insights? Yes or no, okay? So uh, I'm being explicit here, like try not, you know, don't take like that in-between issue, right? So say like, you know, uh, largely yes or largely no, and then provide evidence or justification for your position. And from your justification, it needs to be clear to me that you have read those two papers, okay? So draw on the ideas in those two papers to provide those justifications, okay? Uh, maybe you may wanna address like the other side as well. Like you're saying, I'm saying yes uh, because of that. And, and that's why I believe it's yes and not uh, a no answer, things like that, okay? So it's a short essay, just like one, two pages, you know? Uh, and then if you do it, um, I think I can give you like, uh, I will be like very subjective here because it's extra credit, but I can give you like up to 2% extra credit for the final grade. If you write a very really good essay, like it, it shows to me that you read both papers, that you have a very strong argument, I'm gonna give you like 20 points or something like that. So 20 points is like roughly speaking, it's 2% towards your final grade, okay? So that's the extra, extra credit assignment. Finally, uh, I would like to remind you about course evaluations. You should have received that link uh, in your email. So please do that. Again, I cannot control it. I cannot see whether you did it or not, but please do it. And then I'll just take attendance before we go. We still have a minute left. Uh, big data, mostly, plus some questions about Excel uh, access integration, which is assignment eight. There is a study guide that basically it kind of repeats what I just said, right? There's not much to uh, talk about in that study guide. Yeah, so it's uh, mostly, I would say, uh, 70, 80 percent will come from the big data topic. And maybe I'll ask a few questions about Excel access integration, which is uh, assignment eight. Okay, so let me take attendance before we go.
Okay, Clifton. Clifton. Braden. Nathan. Here. Devante. Aaron David. Jessica. I'm here. Hope. Here. Yes, Aaron, I was here, by the way. Who is that? Aaron David. Okay, thank you. Sean. Here. Harrison. Here. Tristan. Here. Violet. Mason. Here. Ahmed. Here. Thank you. Wesley. I'm here. Aaron Haney. Here. Tucker. Shanice. Here. Uh, Jacob. Here. Caitlin. Jason. Here. Brandon. Casey. Okay, friends, thank you very much. And I'll see you on Tuesday. We'll wrap up our big data discussion. Really quick question. Do you have sure. an estimate on when this will be uploaded? Uh, you mean this lecture? Yes. I'll do it right now. I'll, I'll upload it. I will convert it and upload it right now. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Okay. All right. I have another quick question. Okay, go ahead, please. Um, on this assignment, I know like whenever we did it in class, the first method we used for importing the data was like copying, pasting. Yeah. Um, is, it, is it okay if we use that or do we need to go back and change it to the tables? That's fine. I mean, I, I cannot really see which method you use. As long as you have tables with correct data, that's fine with me. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. Thank you.